Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard, average on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at JWonder on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. Oh, I'm big today. I feel like Teams doesn't usually make me big. Um, so uh, today we're going to be working on our roguelike game. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention first is um, we are going to be having a game jam next month. Yeah, I know. I've been talking about it on stream, but um, Right now, the plan is for it to run from July 3rd for the entire month, so until July 31st. Um, and I will be posting up more information about that on the forum, hopefully sometime this week if I can get around to it. Um, we won't be posting the theme, I don't think, until the 3rd, but I still need to talk to other folks on the team. We have the theme and we have like a bunch of nice art and stuff for it. It looks, it looks really good. Um, but I still need some demo Jeffs, Thomas and Joey. You guys got to make some some fake games with our theme. It would be great if we were not uh, like one day from releasing, uh, or two days, I guess, but one, basically one working day from releasing a big update. All right, you heard it. Joey's going to have it to me on Monday. Um, so um, today, though, we are working on our roguelike game. Um, oh, I guess one other thing I want to say going in is um, there was a question on the forum about how classes are used. Um, so on Friday, we are going to be having a class. I stole Joey's plan about classes. Um, you so, stole half of uh, it. We're, we'll, be, we'll be doing some. Yeah, we'll be doing some. I'm not going to like the classy part was like, yeah, um, I'm not, we're going to be doing a JavaScript stream and we're going to be doing a special focus on classes. I don't know what we're going to be building yet, but we'll build something. We're probably going to just use some stuff where we define some classes and also extend Sprite and all that stuff. So if you've ever been interested about that stuff, you know, it'll be kind of more of an educational focus stream. Join us. All right, let's switch to coding. So uh, we're working on our roguelike game. And um, for those who are just joining us, this is a roguelike game in the most strict sense of the term. Not really the most strict, strict, strict sense of the term. That's tough to say. Um, but in, in that, it actually has like, you know, things moving when you do. We have like this nice little field of view thing. Um, so you can only see like what's around you. Um, and you can see that like as I take a step, those lasers move. Um, and so what we've done so far are we have these enemies that move around. So that right there is a random moving enemy. We have these arrow traps that fire when we or an enemy get in front of them. Those tombstones, by the way, are marking where enemies died from the traps. Um, and then when you go to a next level, we have a new randomly generated level for you. And we have that fun little transition that we did on Monday. Um, so, uh, what are we going to be working on today? Well, um, I think we're going to be doing the thing that we finally have been saying we're going to do forever, uh, but never got around to, which is actually interacting with enemies. Right now we have enemies that are walking around and doing stuff, but we don't actually do anything when we run into them. Um, so we are going to actually like do something now. Um, so there are a couple of options here. Um, and I'm curious what you guys think. Um, so option one is um, we just die. The game is over. Mm -hmm. um, and that is totally a valid option. I mean, if we were making like a bigger game, I would say we don't do that because, but this this one is so lightweight, you know, I can totally imagine just dying and then like, all right, I'll just start over again. And frankly, um, because everything moves when you do, it's not that hard to avoid enemies right now. Um, we might do some more enemy types in the future that are harder to avoid. But right now we have the ones that follow walls and we have ones that randomly walk around and the ones you just keep your distance, you're okay. Um, field of view does complicate it a little bit, but I think you'll always be in a situation where you can see who's coming, you know? Like you can always see at least one tile in front of you, so. Um, all right, so that's option one. Option two, um, we do what Rogue does, and we do full-on little battles. This seems like a lot, but um, the way that Rogue does it is it's it's like, it's like an RPG. You run, you hit them, they hit you, you hit them, they hit you, you hit them, they hit you, you hit them, they hit you. It goes on for a while, um, and, and until one of their HPs zero yeah and like literally there's a little text log that says all of this things happening like snake hits you for five damage you hit snake for two damage 
snake hits you for five damage. Critical hit. You hit snake for ten damage. You know, stuff like that. But that is what Rogue does, and that is also what the Mystery Dungeon series does. Um, I think that's super boring and not fun at all. So that's why I listed that one second. Um, and third is we have some other way of kind of getting around enemies. So I was thinking of this yesterday as I was playing um, at this indie game. Um, have you guys heard of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? Uh, I think I saw somebody talking about it. I don't know. It's pretty obscure. Yeah, I know. But um, you guys should check it out. It's pretty fun. Um, anyway, so in that game, uh, just like in Breath of the Wild, you have weapons that have durability. And everybody hates this. Okay? I like it. All right? I've always liked it. But everyone is always like, oh, no, durability. No, thank you. Um, which, fair. I just, it, I like it. Um, but anyway, what happens is you, you use a weapon for a while, then it dies, and you have to use a new one, and you keep moving on like that. So I was thinking, what if we did a really simple version of that, where we put some sword icons down here, boop, 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 and when you run into an enemy and you have a sword icon, sword's gone, enemy's dead. Um, when you don't have a sword, you die. And we come up with some way to refresh these as you go through. Um, so, you know, you pick up Maybe when you pick up an item, like we're going to do power ups eventually, it uh, like a power up could give you, you know, some number of swords. Um, I like it. Like, if you pick, yeah, if you pick up a laser beam, that's worth like 10 swords. <laughs> Maybe you should still have to be. Oh, you can always be slept in, right? Never mind. Yeah, that sounds good to me. I was going to say you might have to be facing the enemy in order for you to kill it with your sword but we don't really have facing up and down and it's probably not worth adding that just for this yep oh daryl's in the chat daryl um and he says happy birthday joey happy birthday oh, thanks joey. yeah second happy let birthday. me open up twitch chat so i can say thanks there i, I had it open it's closed because i only have one monitor today Daryl is famous as being the source of the phrase doing a Daryl, which we still say all the time, which is collapsing blocks and formatting code. Invented the by Daryl. <laughs> um, cool. OK, so um, <laughs> Daryl says, oh, well, I didn't know that was still a thing. Yep, do it all the time. Um, and like every 10th stream, I explain the origin. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and um, get to work on that little sword thingy that I was talking about. Um, so first things first, we're going to actually draw these in the bottom. So we have this whole HUD area. We just haven't been doing it. So um, we're going to go ahead and use um, a variable for this. This will be like attacks remaining. Um, and for testing purposes, we're just going to set this to be three. Oh, and also I'm going to turn ray casting off again. Um, just because easier for debugging. And like I said, I, I, I'm pretty sure our plan is to only have raycasting on for some levels. Um, so, OK, so we set our attacks remaining. Let's go ahead and draw this. Um, we're going to go into uh, the sprite details extension. And well, maybe I should just use the one we're already drawing the HUD with. Where is that? Let's see, this one is the transition. This one is the field of view. This one is the HUD. OK, so here's where we're drawing our little bomb ready thing. Oh, one thing I didn't mention in this game, we have we can put down bombs like this. Um, and then after a while, they explode and they you know blow up walls and stuff, which is fun. And you have to wait till this fills back up before you can use one again. All right, so. Um, Let's go ahead and inside here, we're going to draw those icons. And for that, we're going to be using inside of Sprite Utils, the draw image to image block, this one right here. Um, and we're going to need to draw a icon now. And I'm going to make this, I guess we'll do 8 by 8. Oh, whoops. That is, no, not 186 by 16. Um, and we're going to draw a little sword. So yeah, I went for hard mode by drawing one that is a um, that is diagonal. 
That looks like a sword though, right? I think that came out pretty well. Yeah, I'm convinced. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're gonna be drawing these and we're gonna be using a for loop for this. Um, we're gonna use for index and this is gonna be from zero to, side of math, um, our attacks remaining, whoops. Minus one. There we go. And we're gonna draw this to our screen. And we want to draw this at, so we're gonna be drawing them here, um, going to the left. So you can see right now they're drawing up here in the corner, which is not what we want. We wanna draw here and we're gonna go like expand to the left, depending on how many we have. Um, so we're gonna do um, the width of the screen. So grab that from scene, screen width, minus eight, which is our um, uh, width of our image. Um, and then do minus some math, which is going to be index times, I don't know, nine, just to give them a little bit of space. Um, and for Y, we're going to put, um, needs to be down here near the bottom. So where are we drawing our thing right here? We're doing this at screen height minus 13. I'll just copy that. And we'll nudge it around as needed. There you go. Okay, so three little swords. Um, let's move them down a few pixels. So we're going to do screen height minus, I'm going to move them down four pixels, minus nine. To me. Minus 11. Mm, that's fine. Do they kind of look like corn cobs? Mm, I think they look more like swords than they do corn cobs. I don't think I like them anymore. All right. Uh, I don't want to spend an entire stream redrawing these. <laughs> Could try to make the handle a little this. thicker, but that might make it look more like a corn cob. Yeah. You mean like that? Oh yeah, no, don't do that. Never mind. That was a terrible idea. I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, we'll leave them, leave them as this. We're not, we're not going to keep messing with them. There we go. Um, maybe I make the handle one pixel longer, though. There we go. All right. Oh, 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 actually, I think that was it. I think we need to make the one pixel longer and we make the hilt like that. There we go. I like that. Yep. All right, cool. OK, so um, we got our little attacks drawn down there. Um, let's go ahead and do our enemy interaction. Um, so uh, we're going to be doing this inside of our move enemies function, I guess. Do you want to do it inside of move enemies? Um, that function is already quite crowded, I will say. See, we got feedback from the chat from Daryl, I guess, uh, that it looks like the Master Sword, which, you know, I guess, I mean, I guess that's true, right? I like it. That, that is yes. what the, sword, the Master Sword does look like. This is exactly. Here's garbage. my hot take. Any sword without color looks like the Master Sword. Because the Master Sword is a pretty generic sword. Is that where it's you're going It's the most generic this? sword. And then the thing that makes it different is that it has a blue handle. Yeah. That's fair. Um, yeah, it does I, have I, that kind of zigzag guard, right? At least in some of the games. I think it depends like on different. the version. Yeah, I feel like there were the, some um, particularly cool. Maybe was Twilight Princesses cool? Yeah, that's the one that I think I'm probably most familiar with. Most familiar with? Oh, yeah. I'd like to see the appearance of every. Okay, let's see. Yeah, no, I guess they do all have that that little wing hilt. Yeah. But that that only does come across when you have more than eight pixels. 
True. But I think most normal swords, the guard would curve the other way, not towards the blade, yeah. but towards the handle. You it know, is I also a little back. bit more purpley than bluey, but, you know. Cool with that. I, I, I take it back, Master Sword. You also have this little thinner part. You're, you, you're a distinctive sword, okay? I was, <laughs> um, I wasn't being fair. Look how cute the Wind Waker one is. All right. Okay. Now that I've apologized to a sword. Um, we're going to, so inside of our move enemies function, here's where we're doing all the move stuff. I, I think that actually maybe we should um, do this outside of the move enemies thing, just because there's already a lot going on here. So we're going to put this over here. We're going to make a new function. We're going to call this resolve combat. We're just going to call it immediately after this move enemies. Resolve combat. Ooh, resolve. Um, and we call this move enemies inside of the move player function. So let's go ahead and uh, go over to move player. Go scroll down here. And we're going to call resolve combat. That variant. Collapse. All right. Um, so what we need to do in here, we need to determine, um, are we overlapping with an enemy? Um, well, first, so we have like two kinds of enemies right now. Um, we have the um, kinds you can fight, like this little dude and skeleton. Um, and then we have arrows. Can't fight an arrow. OK, I guess if you have super reflexes, maybe. But I saw a Mythbusters episode and they had a really hard time. I mean, yeah. Uh isn't it just like by nature that the protagonist of any game has to like cut an, an arrow in half and have it split by like this, like right in front of them just to show off how cool they are? I feel like that's it was weird when that. that happened in Nintendo Dogs. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't expect it, but like that Corgi, that, that, that guy could swing. Uh, is there a Corgi in Nintendo Dogs? Yeah, that, that's the first time I, I discovered that I, I was going to own a Corgi someday. It was because it was oh. my first Nintendo Dog. I see. Where is that corgi, by the way? Is it uh, in the mail or? It's in my heart. Um, it's a uh, compelling reason why uh, I will eventually uh, spend the money to buy an apart uh, a place that is near the, the bottom floor, right? Like, don't send your corgis in the mail, people. Okay. Um, at least cut holes in the not in the dog in the in the box <laughs> for the dog. Need worse. All right. Um, okay, so we have this enemy kinds array. This is where we're storing all of our enemy kinds. We're going to do um, a new variable here, which will be attackable kinds. Does anyone have a better name for that? Uh, beat upable. Enemy kinds you can fight. Ooh, nice. that works too. Yeah. Do that. Um, OK. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to loop over all these guys, and we are just going to check for overlaps. So you might ask, why not just use the overlap event here? Well, because we kind of want everything to run in a very specific order in this game, I think it's going to be easier for us to just handle it ourselves. Also, because we're only doing this once every time we move, even though this is kind of an expensive operation, well, not super expensive, because we really do not have that many sprites on the screen. But even if we did have a lot of sprites, because we're only running this once every time we move, um, any lag that this generates will not really be that noticeable to the user at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't need to worry about it that much. OK. Um, so we're going to go ahead and loop over these guys. So for element value of and grab that list. Um, and now inside of here, we are going to do um, another thing, which will be uh, we're going to make this temp sprite. Where are you, Tim Sprite? Oh, you're in here somewhere. There you go. Um, and we're going to do all sprites of kinds. That and pass in value. And now um, for each of these sprites, we are going to um, check to see if they are overlapping with us. And um, we can just do a straight up overlaps check for this because they will be actually overlapping with us. So where are you, overlaps? All of our sprites are exactly eight by eight, so we should never get in a case where the overlap 
is weird. She should obviously be fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if hero. Where are you, hero? There you are. Overlaps with Tim Spray. Then we are going to um, actually do something. So if we have attacks remaining, that's going to be option one. Um, we're going to do if attacks remaining is greater than zero, then we are just going to change attacks remaining by negative one. And we are going to um, uh, destroy our enemy. And I can't remember, did I make a thing for destroying an enemy? Nope. What's destroy overlaps do? Oh, that um, destroys everything that's overlapping with an arrow. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, I just made that before stream because I was fixing a bug. Um, all right, let's move this into a um, function. So we're going to do destroy enemy. And um, this is going to take in a sprite. And um, this is what this is really doing is just calling destroy and then creating the tombstone that it leaves behind. Um, so let's go to destroy that in right there. Um, and then I think that that should be happening right now inside of move enemies, funnily enough. No, 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 that's inside that destroy overlaps function I just talked about. There you go. So here we go. We destroy it, um, and then we set this at the location. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put this over here, change this to destroy sprite, set the tombstone at the location. Get out of there. And go ahead and call this function here. Pass in temp sprite. And leave that the same. Right. There we go. Um, you're also doing it in the bombs. I'm assuming that's somewhere else. But you're right. You're right. That is somewhere else. I was like, I know I'm. I know I decided not to put this in a function earlier, and so that must be a like mean I'm using it in more than one place. But um, let's see. There's create b -b -b bomb. Is there an update of the bombs somewhere? Yeah, right in the middle. There it is. Yeah. Update bu -bu -bu bombs. All right. Grab that. Call our function. Hey, Daryl, I got another cat. His name is Breakfast. <laughs> he is not Breakfast. He is, his name is Breakfast, just to be clear. Well, we'll see. Which true intentions are revealed. Yeah. Well, one day I'll eat them. Wait, let me grab it. One sec. Breakfast the kitten. Breakfast the kitten. Um, what does AutoZone think? Well, it was a rough transition. Let's just put it that way. But after some therapy and um, a very long introduction period, they have finally um, started getting along. I still have to break up fights, often during this stream, but um, it's much better than it used to be. <clears throat> They'll ask, do they ever cuddle? Nope. But Otto does lick breakfast quite a lot. Like breakfast will, when he wakes up, he'll like walk over to Otto and be like, groom me now. And Otto will groom him. And it's very touching. All right. So we're changing our attacks remaining by negative one. Go ahead and destroy that enemy right here. 
like that. And let's test this code out. Um, did I call this function? Well, we'll see. It's either a quarter or it isn't. Um, OK, skeleton, you better survive until I can get over to you. All right. No, they both died. Wait, how did they die? I'll figure that in a second. OK, I'm going to go ahead and do this guy. So nope, stop running away. Stop running away. God. Oh, did we run into that same bug we had with the arrows once where we walked past each other? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll figure that out in a second. All right. It's very hard to catch enemies in this game. <laughs> Arrow has two cats too. Oh. What are your cat's names? All right, we need to do something about this. <laughs> the fact that it is impossible to catch enemies. There you go. I, I think my only luck is going to be catching a skeleton. Um, except they just pass through me is the thing. So like walk into it sideways. Yeah, there you go. You got one. Oh, wait, did you? No, or was it an arrow? No, yeah. that was an arrow. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's fix this because we clearly have to. Um, OK, so right now we're calling resolve combat um, uh, like after the move happens. So we need to call resolve combat before enemies move as well. So we're going to be doing this twice. So we're going to go into our um, uh, move player function right here. And if you move into an enemy, they won't get a chance to move. Um, we're just going to go ahead and call resolve combat. So put it right there. And it should stop the walking through bug and also make it possible to catch them if you are nearby them. OK, so now I should be able to catch this guy. Move up. There you go. My attacks remaining went down by one. So now I have two and left a tombstone behind. So nice. that's what we wanted. All right. Class blocks, format code, doing a Daryl. All right. Um, so uh, let's go back over to our resolve combat. We also need to deal with the case where we die. Um, and so for now, we are probably just going to, well, I'll make a function for this. Did we, wait, death is what I'm going to call it. The final frontier. Very metal today. Um, so if our attacks remaining is greater than zero, otherwise we're going to call death. And I feel like death calls you in this situation. <laughs> Yeah. Did Richard just freeze? You think he did? Um, <laughs> you cannot fight an arrow. Oh no! Just don't always die. If you can dodge, if, he, if you can dodge an arrow, you can dodge a ball. Okay, let's get out of here with that. <laughs> um. All right. I don't want to get into a tirade about that movie, which is definitely not stream appropriate. But um, yeah. uh, the sad thing is, I don't like that movie, and I've probably seen that more times than any movie ever because my really? family likes that movie quite a bit. I've seen it once, split up in two times, where I caught like the first half of it, and then I caught like the second half, but I've, I've never seen it continuously. All right. So, what do we do when we die? Well, um, we are yes. going to. What? What? <laughs> uh, so we could just show a um, game over, which would be the lame option. I don't like that. Um, we are going to show game over. But um, let's go ahead and um, make the game keep running in the background. I think that'll be fun. So what we're going to do is when you die, um, we're going to use the, uh, well, first we're going to make a variable for this. Are we dead? 
I'm going to go ahead and set that to be true. And then we're going to do a, um, we're going to go to move player over here. Um, and uh, inside move player, we have all of this player moving logic. We're not going to be doing that anymore. Um, actually, you know, we probably don't even have to worry about that, to be honest. So we need yeah. to the player sprite. Um, so we're just going to take this logic up here, all this stuff, and um, put this inside of a check. So we're going to say, if not, are we dead? Then we're going to do all of this business. So um, this is the stuff that actually deals with moving the sprites, you know, overlapping with the um, stairs. And yeah, so all of this stuff for, oh, and this too. And we're going to move this up here. OK, so if we are not dead, we are going to do the actual move. So our code should be working just like it was before. Um, but um, now when we are dead, which we are right now, um, the game's going to keep moving. So right now it's just moving whenever I press an arrow key. You can see I'm dead. Our, we didn't actually destroy the sprite, so we're still there. But you can watch these guys just run around. Um, and you can see that skeleton doing zany things because I'm moving so quickly. He's uh, the fake sprite is like going through the walls. So uh, that's pretty cool. So the enemies just disappeared. What? One of the enemies just disappeared. I don't know where it went. I think he Did died. they stand on top of each other? The free memory enemy. There. I don't know. Yeah, All right. Know. So anyway, that's nice. Um, what we're going to do, though, is um, oh. inside of our button handlers, well, I don't know. We already have. Um, um, we're going to do inside here. We're going to say. Um, inside the else. I promise there's going to be a rhyme or reason for this. I'm totally just taking shortcuts right now. Um, so what I want to make it do is not do anything when we press a button. And one way I could do that is by putting an if statement into each of our controller things. But that is not a thing I want to get into because we have four of them. And also, I'm going to have to keep doing stuff like this, I have a feeling. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if direction uh, does not equal negative 1, then we are going to return. All right. So now when I die, and I could die by running into an arrow. Sorry, there you go. Run into that arrow. Um, I'm dead now. Um, now when I press the things, the game, game is running. But I do actually want the game to keep running. Um, so what we're going to do is inside of this death function, um, we're going to go into timers. We have a separately do. And we're going to do a while true. Um, we're going to grab a pause in here. And we're going to call move player with negative one. So every, you know, however much time, the game's just going to automatically play for us. Um, so let me go ahead and hit an arrow. And there we go. Look at these guys run around. There you go. That's too fast. We're going to do slower than this. <laughs> but, you know, I like the idea of the game just keep running in the background. And, you know, if you have a bomb, it'll keep going to all of the stuff will just keep playing. It's kind of yeah, like it's, Spelunky does that, right? Yeah, I think so. It, it runs for like a second, and then they give you a little photograph of your death. But, yes, um, exactly. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, this is very satisfying because, like, if you see the enemies and you, the reason you lost is because you were looking over at the other side of the screen because you're like, this guy, this guy's going to run into an arrow, and then you run into an arrow yourself, you at least get to see it through. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So there we go. This is good. Um, we're going to go over here now, and um, inside of death, we're also going to destroy the player. Um, so let's do that. So you're going to go ahead and do destroy right here. 
and destroy our hero. And um, uh, we are going to also make them a gravestone too, because hey, they deserve it. There we go. Um, so let's do that again. And there we go. We have got a gravestone now, and all these things are still running. Um, all right. So that's nice. Um, one other thing we have to do is we're not destroying the arrow right now when we get hit. So let's do that. We should probably destroy that arrow. Um, it just keeps going on through us, which is grisly. Um, <laughs> All right, so that's right here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and call our destroy. And, oops, call that on our temp sprite, which is our arrow. There we go. All right. Last thing we wanna do is we want to print out a message um, so probably just something like game over, press A to reset, or something along those lines. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, like draw those. Um, we're not going to like use the text thing, um, just because it's going to be, I don't, I don't know, moderately easier. Um, so let's go to where we're drawing our HUD. Right here, this render on the index 100, because it's just the highest one we do. And we're going to go into logic, do an if, and check that are we dead variable. I can't be bothered to find the getter, so I'm just grabbing the setter. Um, and we're going to do draw image. That. Nope, not that. Like that. Um, and uh, because I'm lazy, we're just going to make it 160 by 120. And we're going to just draw this in here. So let's do, I guess I should write the text first. Um, here we go. I want to make this like a, I'm going to look up a sample. Gothic font. Ooh. Boy. Um, er. you could probably fit something approximating that in 160 by 120 for just you died. Yeah, I can do something. I can, I can try and make this happen. We'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. Uh, if you open up font space down there, I think it'll let you type it in and you can see what the exact like uh, type your own quick brown fox. You died. Uh, yeah, okay, I think I get the vibe. Okay. I think what I really just want is serifs. Yeah, that's what makes it all emotional. Yeah, fonts should make you feel, yeah. you know, be alive or in this case, not alive. Um, yeah, let's just let's just go down some fonts. How does papyrus make you feel, Thomas? Dry. Uh, Is that just because it's called the desert? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Makes me feel like I'm just about to watch Avatar. All right. Oh, uh, yes. Joey, how does the Joker font make you feel? Um, feel like I'm going to get what I deserve. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, like, I don't like know, but Batman it's Joker? 
Huh? Like yeah. Batman Joker? Understood. All right, I'll do one. How does Comic Sans make me feel? I like it. Mm. It makes me feel happy. Uh, like, like I not, shouldn't take it's this It's not my favorite serious, thing, but I'm glad it exists. Because I think about that fun fact that it's like, it's the very good for dyslexic people. Yeah. <laughs> this is a fun fact. Okay, that's a pretty good you, right? I think yeah. we did okay here. Yeah, nice. Okay. You can tell I designed fonts professionally. Yeah, just do your job before you became a software developer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got a fun anecdote. Okay, so there was this guy in, I want to say, 1800s era. Um, and uh, well, it was two, it was two guys. There was a business partner and a person who was designing a font. And their goal was to make what they thought would be the most perfect font ever. This is going to be the font they would use to put um, like print books in. And it was just going to blow all other fonts from the day out of the water. Um, so it's called the hammer type, what they call this font. And um, uh, eventually they had a bit of a falling out. The person who was making the font um, wanted to uh, like no longer allow the business guy to use the font. Um, and so what he ended up doing was grabbing all of these um, pieces of the fonts. And this was again in like the, you know, I, I don't remember exactly when, like, but before the 20th century for sure. Um, so the type was actually like pieces of lead, you know, like the actual carved letters on pieces of lead that you would ar arrange in a printing press and you would use to um, uh, print out whatever it is you were writing. So um, if, uh, what this person ended up doing was over the series of a year, basically, he took all of the letters that he had written and um, uh, started throwing them into the Thames. This is in London. Um, and it, like the dead of night, he would just like go out, grab some of the pieces of the font, um, go and like throw them out. And then um, uh, eventually he had done the entire thing. So this font was lost to time because he had thrown his creation into um, the River Thames. And um, the really fun part is that all of this happened and you can still find pieces of the font in the Thames. Um, it's like, wow. you know, it doesn't go away. Um, and so there are people out there who go and search for this. Um, <laughs> you know, they're just trying to find things. And so like I was reading a book by somebody who had um, found some pieces and like she had a lowercase f and a um, uh, an e or something like that. Um, wow. I wouldn't have thought there were that many pieces. I feel like they get put, picked up pretty quickly once people started looking for them. But there's I mean, it's not it's not small. just there's not just 26, you know, they, they, they would have, they have a lot of copies and a lot of different sizes and stuff. Mm. Uh, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah. All right, here we go. Now the dyed looks so formal. I think I have to go in and clean up my U a little bit. All right. How do you feel about this? Looks good. Yeah. When I started this, I was like, this is not going to look good. And then, um, yeah, I think it turned out okay. All right. So this will be our gonna text. Put a little box around it. Yeah, yeah, we're going to put a little box around it. Oh, whoops. Move this into like the center of the screen ish. Once an Arduino is going to like come in and play this game with a microscope and be like, you are two pixels off on this side. I do think we are two pixels off on the left side right now.
go. And we are definitely off here on the bottom, at least. Yeah. Gonna do that. There you go. And um, we're gonna make it look kind of like a frame. So, whoops. It's right there. Like that. And do another one. That. And yeah, I think that's good enough. Yeah, looks good. Still a little off, isn't it? There we go. All right, you died. So we're gonna draw that to the screen. Um, we also need to write out like press A to reset, but I think we'll just use actual text for that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and die. You died. Oh, that U is awful. No, thank you. Okay, I gotta fix the U. The rest of this I'm fine with. That U is no good. Okay, I didn't wanna say anything. I think we should shift it up so that it, because we've got the bar on the bottom, so it looks kind of, it's centered on the screen, but it feels like you're it's right, off right. center because of the bar. Yeah. Joey, you can always speak up. I won't listen to you. Sometimes I'll listen to you. Mm. Just not a guarantee, you know? Yeah. No, thank you. Should there just not be a little tail? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I guess I gothic just, like, design is down one tail. where you get U and B mixed up a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's no good either. Coming. I feel like it should be asymmetric. Yeah, what if you just killed that out? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's not bad. I don't hate yeah. that. Just do like that. No. No. Uh, all right, we'll just do symmetric. There we go. The safest option. All right, let's die again. OK, so we need to move up like 10 pixels. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. So select and do one, two, three, four, five, six. That looks about right, actually. Maybe seven. There you go. Nice. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, that was good. All right, cool. Um, so that's nice. Um, we need to put in that text that I was mentioning, which is like press A to restart. Um, and I think what we could actually do is um, clear out this bottom guy, and we'll just put the text down here. Um, so we're already inside of that function. Um, so we're just going to put this up at the top, put all the rest of this inside of an else. Um, and now, oh, um, except for the, we want the fill rectangle. So grab. Uh, this bit. Put that up there. Um, so down here, we're going to go ahead and actually draw the text. Um, and let's see, is it going to be better for me to use the text sprite extension, or should I just write this text out? Press A to reset. How many letters is that that aren't shared? A lot of those letters repeat. I'll draw it out. Um, OK, don't need this one to be full width, so we're going to make this 60. We're going to make this um, 10 tall. And let's go ahead and write this out. I'm going to do a P. Uh, 
Thomas, have you been playing any video games lately? No. I, inst- I purchased and installed Tears of the Kingdom, and I still have not played it. It's been like two weeks now, and I'm just, it's getting a little ridiculous at this point. But one day, maybe soon, I will actually play it. Yeah, that's a game you can play forever. So I don't know when I'm going to stop playing it. Here's my, here's my, I know people come here for my video game reviews. Um, I think Breath of the Wild's better. I have not heard as much about Tears of the Kingdom as, you know, when Breath of the Wild came out. It's just like, so my assumption has been that it's just not that different from Breath of the Wild. Yeah. I don't know if that's well, totally it's true. pretty different, actually. Okay. Um... As someone who was fairly ambivalent about Breath of the Wild, that's good news for me. But oh man, I don't I'm really think that that not to, to yeah. go and drive over to um, <laughs> Boiler Town and kick with the car the I don't game. own. <laughs> and... off the stream. Yeah, uh, I guess without spoilers, I don't know that it's the parts that are different are different enough that they would really change your opinion if you did not find Breath of the Wild interesting or appealing it's it's, i'll find out one day yeah yeah it's 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 kind of like a building game um Mm. with breath of the wild on top of it and i will say though while i don't like it as much as breath of the wild um at least in my very biased sample of talking to my friends and everybody i know who played it I am in the minority. People seem to like it much more than Breath of the Wild. I don't actually have an opinion between the two. I think they're both good. Oh, to be clear, they're both great games. Uh, I, I should have clarified equally good, not not like saying I think Richard thinks it's bad or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. Got that. I'm going to draw this at um, x equals 5. Y equals screen height minus, whoa, that fun bug. Screen height minus 13. And let's die. Press A to reset. Okay, just gotta move it down like a couple pixels. Just like one pixel actually. Um, And I'm gonna put in some seeds all right beautiful all right well that's going to be it for us today um thank you for tuning in daryl it was so nice to virtually see you see your username in a chat again um you know play your games they they, they look very pretty i didn't play them because i didn't want to blow up my computer on stream but yeah joey's computer can um it can't walk and chew gum at the same time let's say that um it can, I mean, it can, but it, it, I mean, it does have to, like, you take a step and then you chew and then you take a step and then you chew, that sort of scenario. So not at the same time is what? I mean, they're both happening within the same time period. Okay. It just right. defines, yeah. like, define time, right? Like, come on, man. Yeah, what is, you're right. What is time? Yep. Yeah. It's Who a human time? construct. Right? It's, um, yeah, okay. Before this devolves into a philosophical rant, um, uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Remember, we have a mini game jam going on right now. You have the rest of the week. This is the pet jam, so making games about your pets. I still need to do it. I definitely have. Well, I, I could submit one of the millions of games I've made about my pets on stream, but um, I'm, I'm just going to put together a really short, like five second game um, on that. Um, and like I mentioned, we have a full game jam that's going to be starting in um, July. So um, look forward to more details on that. I'm going to make a sticky post on the forum. We're also going to be promoting this on social and like the home screen of Arcade. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. I hope you all can submit stuff. We love judging those games. So um, yeah, look forward to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joey at Jay Wonder on the Make Code Forum. I'm Thomas at Sparks on the Make Code Forum. And we will see you on Friday for a very special um, very special makes it sound like we're doing a PSA um, stream um, about why you shouldn't smoke. No, about classes. Um, uh, mm-hmm. All right. See you later, everybody.